Morning, Betty. Is Steve in? Hello, Mr. Rogers. Yes, you may go right on in. Thanks. You bet. Hmm. Wonder what's the matter with him. Hello, Kent. Hi. Didn't expect you back so soon. Anything wrong? Plenty. I just came in off the road. Mm-hmm. Good trip? No, sir, it wasn't. Cigarette? Thanks. Look, I've only been with the company a comparatively short time. I think our dealers are swell men to do business with. I enjoy working with them. But even I get tired of hearing that same old story day in and day out. When are you going to get us some more pens? Yes, I know, Kent. That's what they're asking, too. Listen. We would greatly appreciate your seeing fit to double our quota of pens for the next quarter. Cordially yours, J.W. Baxter. Hmm. Buyer for a big Chicago department store. They're all like that. Big dealers, little dealers, medium-sized dealers. What are we going to do? Competition's delivering post-war pens to these dealers today. And all I've got to deliver is conversation. What are we going to do about it, Steve? Well, I know what I'd like to do. I'd like to get dealers in here. Dealers like Mr. Baxter, for example, and let them see for themselves. If it were only possible, I'd like to sit him right down there in that chair where you are and explain the whole thing. You know, tell him, Mr. Baxter, I'd like to show you just why it is Schaefer can supply you with no more than your quota of pens at this time. Here's one reason. Communication plug. Doesn't look like too much, does it? But the armed forces need them pretty badly in this war. And aerial bomb fuses are another reason. 67 parts to this important little fellow. Then there are the artillery fuses. Over three and a quarter million. That's how many of that little item we've made for the army. And we mustn't forget automatic radio tuning unit heads. Looks complicated, doesn't it? Well, it is, especially to make. 267 parts in this one head. Almost a thousand in a complete set. Some of them machined to tolerances of one ten thousandth of an inch. Well, there they are, Mr. Baxter. And even in this, Schaefer demonstrated its traditional leadership by being the first pen manufacturer to get into high volume war production. Yes, those are the reasons. Those are the reasons why we can't up your quota right now. We're meeting quotas for Uncle Sam. That's what I'd like to do, Kent. Show them. Yes, that's it. Show them. Yeah, that'd be swell. We only could. Actually, showing them is always better than telling them. And I'd like to have our friend Mr. Baxter see our ordnance plant. See how we converted it from an old paper mill into a war plant. I'd like to have him see the inside, the machines we had to get and install. Some fairly small as machines go, and some of them pretty big. I'd like him to see our pen barrel and cap raw stock. Then see the kind of raw stock we use for war products. Steel, brass, aluminum, bronze. As much as 12 tons of one kind a day. I'd like to show that to Mr. Baxter. Yes, and to all dealers. 
This isn't our idea of what a pen company should be doing, but the war wasn't our idea either. Naturally, we wanted to do all we could to help. That's why we were the first company in the pen industry to go into war work. That's why we have never failed to meet our production schedule to Uncle Sam. And to do that, we had to develop, design, and build special jigs and fixtures so that we could turn out one war product, hitherto made on benches by hand, in large quantities. Because of their long experience in the fine precision workmanship ways of making pens and pencils, the people of Schaefer were ideally suited to make high precision war products. This war experience in working to microscopic tolerances on all types of machines taught us some things that will be useful in producing even finer pens and pencils when this is over. We're proud of the work we're doing for the armed services, but we'll be glad when the need for this kind of work is gone. But until it is, until complete victory is won, Mr. Baxter, well, we can't make the number of pens we'd like to. We've had to keep on making the tools of war, the kind of tools that are needed all along the road to victory. Communication plugs used in transmitters and receivers up on the front line. More than seven million plugs came from the plants you have just seen. Artillery fuses, precision built at Schaefer's went into more than three and one half million shells that were blasted at the axis. Aerial bomb fuses for all types up to the big two-ton blockbusters. Schaefer was in on many a victory punch where it was needed most. In the communication quarters of these same bombers is the auto-tune control, built by Schaefer to work quickly and accurately even up in stratosphere temperatures as low as 50 degrees below zero. With the auto-tune, this bomber can keep in touch with fighter escorts or other flights or the home base without fear of enemy jamming. A fully automatic frequency change in a matter of seconds at a time when fighting hands are busy and every second counts. Schaefer built and assembled a million and a half precision parts per week to produce these units. There was a time when carrier planes signaling for a landing were frequently picked up by the enemy, disclosing the location of our fleet. But with this three-head auto-tune set, the frequency was changed in less than eight seconds, and the signal never traveled beyond the horizon. These are the kind of tools it takes to save American lives and ships and win a war. These are the tools Schaefer put ahead of fountain pens and pencils. And now that you've seen for yourself, we know you'll understand how it is. That's what I'd like to show every dealer, Kent. Yeah, Steve, that'll be swell all right. But you know, there are other things on dealers' minds these days. Mm. I'm thinking of one of my small dealers, fella down in Fairmont. The other day I dropped in on him. Yes, Kent. I've been doing business with Schaefer for many years, many years. I even know Mr. Schaefer. Yes, I know. Always I used to think Schaefer, the leader, the tops, there is none better. But now, well, other pens come along, new lines, new models. Can I help it, I ask myself? The Schaefer may be, well, what about Schaefer quality? See what I mean? They're thinking about other things, too. Some pretty fundamental things. Yes, I guess a lot of us are apt to forget it sometimes. Forget what? That the story behind our leadership through the years, our continued leadership, is actually the story of shape of quality. You remember how, at the time we entered the war, we held a 40% preference rating? Think of it. 
With over 50 pen manufacturers to choose from, four out of every 10 pen buyers selected Schaefer. There's only one fundamental reason for this, the quality of the product. Quality, right to the point. It's the quality built into every single pen that makes Schaefer leadership. And I guess no part of the pen is a better example of our high standards of quality than the Triumph nib. The making of this nib, well, to me, it's a quality story that practically speaks for itself. It's the story of the finest of raw materials, gold being shaped by skilled hands, the creation of an ideal, right to the point. That's how leadership is made. <laughs> Sometimes I've wondered just where our quality does begin. Maybe it is back in the radite department. Maybe our leadership begins... Well, take this clip for the new lifetime triumph, for instance. Before its design and mechanism were accepted, we had to know how well it would work. How long would it last? Would it work easily? Would it hold a pen securely? What effect would it have on the fabric of a man's suit? So for some, the quality that brought leadership has its beginning in our laboratories where many questions are answered. Yes, the laboratory is the quality proving ground for all new materials, all new designs. And here, additional checks and double checks are constantly being made on samples of pens right off the production lines, checks made on mechanical writing machines, and by hand. Part of the secret of our continued leadership must certainly be in its laboratories. Part of the secret must be in the service department operation, too. One-day service has always been its aim, even through the war years. Arrive in the morning, usually shipped back the evening of the same day. That's the way it is at Shapers. Our pencils are built to the same fine standards with the same diligent care in the selection of materials, the same craftsmanship, the same progressive engineering and watch-like precision. This newly developed sleeve tip is the mark of the new Schaefer pencil. It's more than streamlining, it's better writing. The conventional style pencil tip supports the lead at only one point of contact. This sharp line contact has a tendency to score the lead. In writing, the pencil naturally revolves slowly. When the lead is scored all the way around, it breaks off easily at the score mark. The new sleeve style pencil has a tip with a surface contact that supports the lead over a greater surface. This tip distributes finger pressure over a greater area, avoids scoring, reduces lead breakage. The new tip plus the 39% smaller writing point afforded by fine line leads gives true visibility. You see what you write when you write. 
A tip that will not roll or ride on a ruler. A better pencil for all kinds of work. It took many years to develop the tensile strength which made these thin leads practical. They'll write smoother, blacker, and longer. Lead need extend only a short distance. Therefore, chance of breakage is reduced. These thin leads will write as many carbon copies as there is strength in the writer's hand. Extravagant claims are sometimes made for the quick drying property of some writing fluids. Instantaneous drying depends upon excessively deep penetration. Scrip is quick drying, but scrip is a perfectly balanced writing fluid in which no one desirable property is achieved at the expense of another. Scrip is better for writing, better for the pen. The story of our continuing leadership is perhaps most effectively demonstrated in the new Lifetime Triumph pen. Here is a product utterly new, far ahead of anything in the field, and yet it employs many of the basic fundamentals that were engineered by us from the very beginning. For example, an exclusive engineering feature with us, the nib, the heart of the pen. The Lifetime Triumph retains the slightly turned up tip, gives a rocker feel to the pen, smooth, effortless writing in any position. A normal line when writing with the bottom of the nib. Fine writing when the top of the nib is used. A custom-built nib to meet all writing needs. A casual study of signatures quickly shows the variety of writing styles and habits. Each writer demands a type of point to suit individual needs. We have a complete range of point styles. Truly a custom-built pen to suit individual needs. Here is something new, an exclusive engineering feature, the nib wraparound design. Wrapped around the outside of the feed, it gives extra strength to the barrel and spring and tension to the nib. The design of the new Lifetime Triumph nib makes possible the giant size feed the radial writing engine, with 19 large diameter fissures that control the flow of writing fluid under all pressure conditions. Obviously, no plastic sheath point could handle as large a feed because there simply isn't enough room. The gold sheath provides the room needed for a larger feed. When a pen is held in the hand, it becomes warm. As the pen gets warm, the air inside the pen also gets warm and begins to expand. As the air expands, it forces writing fluid out of the main reservoir. The warmer the air, the more writing fluid it forces out. The fissures in the feed absorb this writing fluid. When this happens to ordinary pens with few or no control fissures, well, a glob of writing fluid on the paper or clothing. Naturally, the pen with the largest safety reservoir, with more and better designed fissures, is the safest pen to use. What is true about changes in temperature is also true with changes of altitude. The higher the altitude, the more unequal is the pressure of the air inside the pen and out. At high altitude, held in this position, the fluid in the head of an ordinary pen would be forcibly expelled by the pressure of the air behind it in the pen. In the new Lifetime Triumph, a drain back permits the fluid to flow down from the head into the reservoir, and the expanding air can escape unhampered. In an airplane, a pen should always be opened in an upright position. Schaefer is a good high-altitude safety pen. A positive, quick-acting plunger produces a force great enough to instantly flush out the entire reservoir, feed, and nib, expelling all dirt. The pen fills with the same force and speed. A new non-corrosive alloy in the plunger of the Triumph pen makes this shaft absolutely rigid. This means smoother, more positive travel. 
Here is something basically new in pens. It's an exclusive feature, the clip, a rigid arm of streamlined design with an inner steel spring construction taking all the tension, all the pressure. A clip that never weakens, never loses its gripping life. The exclusive spiral grooved grip, typical of our attention to details, assuring even more comfortable writing pleasure to Schaefer users. Protective metal bands at the end of the cap give additional strength, protect it from possible damage. Metal thread bands on cap and barrel ensure positive tightness throughout the life of the pen. The appearance of the pen, streamlined along classic lines, a pen that never ages in appearance, always as new looking as tomorrow. The Schaefer Triumph, a precision engineered pen. The desk set has a new type socket of exactly the same construction as the Triumph pocket pen cap. This keeps the point ready for instant writing. This pen also has the improved lifetime triumph point and giant feed. Yes, Kent, I guess the story behind our continued leadership is the story of unmatched quality. Yes, Steve, but dealers aren't wondering only about the quality of our product. They're wondering, we'll take my dealer in Fairmont again. Mr. Schaefer is chairman of the board probably not as active as before. How can I help wondering, how is Schaefer going to treat me now? His policies, are they going to change? You see, I sometimes wonder, wouldn't you? Sure I would. Perhaps in their shoes, I'd wonder too. It's only natural. That's where I'd like to do the same thing again. The same thing? Yes. I'd like to have your little dealer from Fairmont and our big dealer here, too. I'd like to bring them here and have them meet the men of Schaefer who guide its merchandising activities. Our vice president and general sales director, Harry Waldron, second from the left, and George Holt, sales manager, at the right. Harry has been with the company more than 30 years. George, more than 22 years. I'd like them to talk with Grant Olson, our director of advertising and foreign sales, 17 years experience with Schaefer. Or Rex Kahn, our wholesale manager, 17 years service. Bob Casey, director of our research laboratory, could show them another phase of pen making. Bob is a 25 year man. Max Ola, chief engineer with 20 years of service. Al Howard at the left and Frank Wallace, both assistant factory superintendents. Frank's with the company 23 years, Al 24. On the right, Ned Fish, who heads up script, leads, and pencils, 15 years. And Wilbur Olson, our director of research and development, associated with us 20 years. And our purchasing agent, Frank McCowan, would have a good word for them. He's been with us since 1937. Formerly was a Schaefer dealer. George Beck, a Schaefer vice president, and our treasurer, Jim Lau. George has been here 26 years, Jim, 25. Lewis Cook, our credit manager, more than 22 years of service. And Bill Heising, general factory superintendent. He started with the company in 1917. All these men are a part of the guiding force of Schaefer. Their long service records attest the stability of the company. Each knows the problems of the retailer. Each man is backed up by adequate assistance and understudies. And I'd like Mr. Schaefer and Craig Schaefer to tell them in person what our policies are going to be. You know, I'd like to sit them right down at a table and let them ask their questions. Mr. Schaefer, I know you're in war work, and I know you've had to limit your pen production, but, well, we're one of your largest dealers. And naturally, you're interested in satisfying your customers, meeting their demands for Schaefer pens. That's exactly it. Schaefer's continued leadership means a lot to me and my customers. Our continued leadership means a lot to all of us. And what you say about the demand for Schaefer pens in your store is true in the stores 
of all of our old and established dealers. It certainly is true in my store. So naturally then, in the interest of fair play to all of our old dealers, we haven't added any new ones during the war. We decided the best policy was to allot merchandise on a unit rather than a dollar volume basis. That's fair enough. And we have allowed all dealers to select the models they chose. There are no combination deals on Schaefer products. Well, we appreciate that, Mr. Schaefer. Yes, and I do too. But what about the future, Mr. Schaefer? You're maybe not as active as you were, and, well... Craig, I think that is your question. You have been president since 1938. My father is taking it a little easier now. The man who invented the first lever filler, who put the lifetime pen on the market, who made the name Schaefer stand out way and above all other names in fountain pens, well, I guess he deserves to take it a little easier now. What about the future? Our policies in the future will be exactly as they've always been. In other words, a direct franchise between Schaefer and its dealers. A franchise based on controlled distribution. Schaefer will continue to develop the same type of substantial retail outlets, small and large, that have been the bulwark of our dealerships in the past. And as always, every Schaefer product must stand on its own merits. We don't force a product on the dealer. No one need buy one Schaefer product to get another. Quality at a good profit to the dealer and to the final purchaser who pays for it all is full money's worth. Those gentlemen are our simple but fundamental merchandising policy. But the dealer knows that this kind of quality job needs quality people to do it. It requires forward-looking personnel policy, sound, harmonious teamwork between management, supervisory, and all personnel. That spirit we have here at Shape. And believe me, we'll try our very best to foster such spirit to the worthy end that it will bring a better living for us all. That's what I'd like our dealers to hear and see. One, see our plant under wartime production. Two, see how the quality is being built into each Schaefer pen, right to the point. And three, see and meet the men who shape our dealers' policies. You see, Kent, if we could show our dealers that it's these things, plus their faith and efforts, that will always guarantee Schaefer's continued leadership. Uh, uh, what's the rush, Kent? Where are you going? I got a date to do some talking with a friend of mine over in Fairmont. <laughs>